<laughs> uh, guys, I am live with Kimberly. I want to say Brooks right now, but no, it's Kimberly Woods. We were talking about another Kimberly earlier. Kimberly Woods. Yes. <laughs> you are an incredibly multifaceted performer. I know you do film and TV and you also do voice acting. We focus on voice, voice acting here, but I will definitely uh, want to know about your film acting career. But we, I, we met on uh, Onyx Equinox. I wore this today for you. The back is exactly what you have in your big back Yay. circle. Uh, she plays Shinastiku in um, Onyx Equinox. I know a lot of people here have watched it. Miraculous Ladybug, which is huge. We had Christina V on recently, and that was super fun. Pokemon Masters, Masters Legends of Runeterra, Sword Art Online, and Mahakukukaba, which the translation is irregular at Magic High School. What's up, man? Uh, I am just happy to be here. Yeah. So you started as a child actor, correct? I did not, actually. I kind of got into acting like late in the game. Um, What's late in the game? We don't need to talk what we are <laughs> now, but like, I, like professionally, I started hitting like auditions when I was 22, you know? But I've been doing theater since I was five, right? Um, yeah. So what's, what's late in the game in your books? Like at 18, at 16, at 25, at you know, yeah. 13, you're like- I was performing like um, on stage, like dance and stuff like that and, and modeling early on, like starting oh, at age cool. three, I was doing dance. And then oh. modeling was like in my teens. And then, but I didn't take my first acting class until college. Okay. I mean, okay. I did like church plays and stuff like that, but like I, I, I didn't- guess, I guess <laughs> California that's late, but most people like do acting in college and then figure out how to move forward, you know? Um, yeah. so, so you took an acting class or you studied theater? Both. Both. Okay. I took an acting class, fell in love with it, and then decided, okay, I'm going to get a theater cer certificate. Because we didn't have actual, like, theater majors um, mm -hmm. at Princeton. So getting a theater certificate was, like, the closest. And you're from it. the East Coast? I am. I was born in Missouri in the Midwest, but I grew up mostly in, in Delaware. Delaware. Okay, cool. Yeah. Princeton. Wow. So when you applied, you thought liberal arts or there was something specific that you thought was... I thought that I was going to be a doctor. <laughs> I mean, Holy like, this cow. was like, when I took my, that acting class, that was just like, hmm, let me take this acting class. You know, I love film. Um, but going in, I was pre-med um, and See, had always had kind of been on that track. Okay, wow. Yeah. And did you do, you got through how many years of pre-med before you were like, uh-uh, or you finished? Um, no, I was pre-med and then I just kind of switched to, I also majored in neuroscience <laughs> because I had taken so many like science oriented classes. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, okay, that one was I am fascinated by this. Like usually, you know, an artist will be like, oh, I was an English major and an actor or, you know, I, whatever, I majored in poetry or history and, and theater. When I hear this, my mind explodes because it's you're using both sides of the brain so beautifully. Um, so what made you go, OK, I've got this neuroscience degree. And now, <laughs> uh, yeah, what happened when you graduated? And like, how did it all start breaking out? And you going, no, this is my calling, you know? Oh, gosh, from the first acting class, I really I really loved it. Um, but I think what sold me on it was that the summer before senior year, I did an internship out here in LA um, on the Warner Brothers lot oh, cool. um, <laughs> for a production company, uh, Thunder Road Pictures um, in production. And so being out here, I was like, yeah, you know, I like it out here. I really want to do this. I can see myself out here. I'm going to move out after college and go for it. And so that was like the defining moment of I'm going to do this. Now, when you expressed this to your parents, was it well received? They were very nice. I mean, I, I'm so lucky. Yes, yeah. they were like, as long as you get your degree, like if that's what you're passionate about, we support you 100% in your decision. Just make sure you finish college and graduate. And if that's yeah. what you want. That's yeah. amazing. Because, And I ask because so many people, you know, don't get the support or get pushback or you just went full fledged with your dream and now you're letting them know, hey, look, I'm doing this, you know, which is also amazing because it's it's truly what you wanted to do. Right now, what's one of your favorite roles? And not because like the writing is amazing because we know all the shows we work on are great, but like one of the characters that you just feel connected to and that you just feel so excited to to go into the booth and record. Uh, so many. Um, I mean, one of the 
big ones for me was being uh, AJ, Anna, and Le- um, Lana and Archer's daughter in Archer because um, mm-hmm. I'd been a huge fan of that show for so long. Um, and so it was just funny, like, I never imagined when I was watching that, like, oh, maybe one day I'll voice their child, you know? Wow, crazy. <laughs> that was just uh, when you not really cool did and you know surreal. it was for that? Mm-hmm. Were you geeking out? Yep. Oh, my God. And when you like, booked it, what I happened? Can... I was freaking out. <laughs> what, yeah. other, what other fandoms do you have that you've gotten to be a part of? Um, I mean, I love Onyx Equinox. I love the lore. I love the, you know, Mesoamerican culture and stuff. So are you part Latina really special. or I am. Yeah. Um, Mexican. Oh, cool. And Native. oh, my God. So this yeah. this this feels extra special to be able to represent. That's amazing. Um, yeah. And we, we had Sophia on a couple weeks ago and it was really cool to get into the ins and outs of stuff. She she opened up and spoke super candidly about how she, you know, this project has helped her and and coming out of her shell and just being true to who she is and I was just like you we know that artists throw their their hearts into their work we just don't know to what extent and so it was really beautiful to have her on and she's just been such a she's been so great to work with she's so wonderful yeah yeah everybody on the team is really yeah I feel like I came in a little bit late I was doing some ADR sessions for them because I believe there was another Zyanya and for whatever reason that didn't work out um so I was just kind of like filling in like when you do ADR it's more about like the timing of what what you don't you don't get to play with your own timing of things um and I didn't really understand the whole team until we did a podcast I'm like oh hey guys I don't know any of you uh so you you'd been working on it for quite a while yeah um a couple of years ago I think Oh my gosh, okay, that's so crazy. I feel like for a lot of projects, I come in a little bit later, right before they come out, so I don't realize that they've been in the works for like a couple of years. So talk to me about Miraculous Ladybug. That's a show that a bunch of people love that are watching right now. Um, did you watch it before too? Or is it one of those things, oh, another cartoon I'm auditioning <laughs> for? Um, I knew of it. Um, I don't know if I had actually watched um, any episodes. Yeah. But I, I knew like how big it was. So when I booked it, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is really cool. Um, and so I got to be in the Miraculous New York special. Um, so that was fun because it took place in New York um, and it had uh, a diverse group of people, uh, characters. So there was um, Eagle, I think. I'm blanking on her name. Oh, Sparrow. Oh, I'm not who's sure. Native American. Uh-huh. And then um, my character who's black, who's um, Aeon slash Uncanny Valley. Uh, so that was really cool to get like that diverse representation in yeah, um, sure. Miraculous Ladybug. So I wanted to ask you about uh, this uh, in, in Irregular at Magic High, uh, which is mm-hmm. Mahuka Kuku no Ritusi. Guys, I know that some <laughs> of you are watching and have seen this, so you know, feel free to just laugh at how I pronounce that. Um, what, but you've done a ton of episodes on that. Uh, do you love anime and what's oh you know, yeah how, how did these come about because I, <laughs> I do know that uh, auditioning for anime is like a tricky like underground world I love anime um I grew up watching anime um Ranma Cowboy Bebop um going to like anime expo uh <gasps> for several years before I was even part of it um oh you went to some that, of those, as a like, goer like you just yep <laughs> oh my I god I was cool. <laughs> A I dressed goer, up for, as like <laughs> uh, Yurichi from Bleach one year, um, so I've always just like been a fan of of anime and and that mm-hmm. culture. Um, so, I guess how I got started, I did some of the opening the open auditions for Bang Zoom. Okay. That took place at Anime Expo, and then I also did some workshops with uh, Mommy, the the casting director at Bang Zoom. Wait, there were auditions at Anime Expo. There were, yeah. Shoot, my They had, like, open auditions where you... Um, I didn't know there were auditions there. Mm-hmm. You'd go up on stage, and they'd give you the copy, and you'd <laughs> do it in front of everybody. <laughs> I actually, I think Zara Fuzzle did this as well. I This is crazy. I, that's that's nerve-wracking. To audition it, in front <laughs> of an audience of people? We, we have to do it in front of five people, and that's scary. Holy yeah, God. and I remember like trying oh. to get on the list to audition. It was even hard. You had to like try to show up at a certain time, and I think like I went one day, couldn't get in. Had to show up the next day and try again. 
you did it and then and then somebody paid attention like what happened but i did it but i did it and i did some workshops with um the casting director at bang zoom um and then she started sending me auditions and then oh, um sweet. i think the thing that kind of got me started was when i booked uh tse for sword art online um so that was cool that was one that i had watched too before mm-hmm. uh getting the part so jumping into that universe, I was like, what? Like, I have this shirt from the show that I wore at Anime Expo several years before. Oh, my you know? God. I can't help but uh, want to just ask about Westworld. You got to work on Westworld. I did. Tell, like, <laughs> guys, any Westworld watchers here? Holy cow. <laughs> what was the experience like? You're on set, you're dealing with, did, like, yes. <laughs> I mean, it was, that part was interesting because the actual part had no lines. Uh, even though it's Whatever. like a co-star part, but for the audition they had they had lines. So, yeah. um, so going in, I had to read for them, and I remember coming out and being like, "Oh, I didn't get it." Like I was playing the Westworld music on my on the way home, I think, <laughs> and being like, "Oh, boohoo!" Like I didn't get it. That I suck. Uh, you know how sometimes you have those moments where you just yeah. think you, you. I don't did know. You feel like they didn't receive it well, or you just were questioning your, what you did, but they I were think nice because sometimes they were nice. Like, Okay. They were actually nice. I think I, sh- I just think it was one of those moments where I was questioning. And you had to break down in hysterics? Is that what it was? I was a hysterical woman, yeah. It was that episode where people were um, getting the like their future told, basically. Like, getting uh-huh. the message with like how the rest of their lives were going to play out. And um, you're freaking out about it. So I was freaking out about it. So let's talk video games. You have done a ton of them. <laughs> Pokemon Masters. <laughs> Are you a Pokemon fan? I am, yeah. I got to be Jasmine, so that was, like, super cool. <laughs> and with, with those kinds of video games, like, is it just a few sessions and you're done? Or have you gotten to go back in and, and record more stuff? Uh, that one was pretty short. And I, I, I know nothing about this character, Jasmine. Uh, what does she sound like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of me, but just high pitch, like, steel type! Yay! <laughs> do you feel like you book a lot of high-pitched characters or do you is it do you run the gamut? I mostly book youthful characters. Uh for Legends of Runeterra, I got to do some deeper stuff, um, which was can cool. You, can you give us some examples if you remember? I know some um, of Let's see. Uh Moonlight Flowers Upon My Blade. Like that's it. <laughs> I, I love that everything for Riot, well, besides the game, I guess, but like everything related to League and stuff like that, it's always so mysterious that we do this <laughs> thing and it works, uh, you know? They'd love to hear more about about your experience voicing Shinostaku. Like, um, she sounds very much like you, you know, a lot of times we mm-hmm. put on an accent or a, a up pitch, down pitch. Uh, did you feel like a... I remember trying to make Zyanya sound I thought it was gonna be more like this. I don't know, and my audition was a bit mixed. I'm, tr- I'm like trying to remember. And then I went in and it's very much me, you know, uh, yeah. which is cool because then you can just kind of like <laughs> sink in deeper into the emotion, which is really important in this in this show. Uh, you know, what did you feel like in your journey of, of Shinastiku and, and what she has to go through and all of that? I think for me, it was a similar thing where I kind of pictured initially going in that it was gonna be a little more high pitch uh, you know, like anime girl. Yes. And then when I got there, they're like, no, you know, deeper, yeah. your deeper register, like deep. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. You know, so that was, that was cool. Cause for, also for me, it was difficult cause I was jumping around and not seeing full episodes and never getting a full script. So I wasn't yeah. always up to what everything was, you know? Yeah. I came in, I hadn't read any of the scripts before Shinostaku appears. So I think, you know, uh, episode six i just had the script for that um yeah. and she was very mysterious she is she totally <laughs> you know in that, that episode yeah. i was like whoa what is going on yeah. um so the writers they didn't give me like the full story with what's going on exactly okay. so i you know i'm not 100 percent sure still what's going on with uh, her but it was fun yeah. to kind of make that up in my head like what might be going on like whoa wait what i'm sorry i'm just reading the news that people ship our characters in Onyx Equinox? You know, shipping, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. I didn't know what that was before Overwatch. Obviously, but I didn't know anything before Overwatch. Uh, so Zyanya and Shinastiku have like a 
like a thing. A thing, yeah. Okay, I dig. I mean, I'm cool for all of it. I don't. I'm not, you know, against anything. But I didn't know about it. Um, I yeah. saw somebody asking about that on Twitter. Like, can we get some more in season two of <laughs> some like? <laughs> Ooh, cool, cool, cool. Hey, listen, I am all for it. Absolutely. Kimberly, where can all of these people find you on the socials? Do you post often? Do you share your news there? When I do. Come? I'm mostly on uh, Twitter and Instagram, so you can find me at twitter.com slash Kimberly Woods and um, Instagram. I'm Kimberly Woods as well. Thank you so much for joining. Guys, yeah. keep an eye out for hopefully Onyx Equinox season two. We don't know yet, but we're crossing fingers yeah. for that. Um, and uh, yeah, keep booming and booping. Boop.